Okay, everyone. Um, so let's start over chapter one, operating system security. I have already uploaded the uh, course content, slayby, and other relevant information, uh, including the PowerPoint slides and everything is available on Blackboard. If anybody has any questions regarding uh, course slayby or anything, if you want to discuss with me, uh, we uh, you guys can always send me an email. So let's start with our chapter number one. The chapter one is about cyber security introduction uh, and uh, the secure role of security operation center. So we have two main agenda items in this chapter. First is the danger. Uh, we will discuss different types of attacks. We'll discuss different types of threat threat actors. I believe everybody's already familiar with the different types of hacker. So I'm just gonna discuss the same stuff, uh, but quickly just give you an overview rather than reinventing the wheel, like what is ethical hacker, uh, the difference between ethical hacker and uh, uh, the black hat hacker. I believe everybody's already familiar with that. So uh, then we've, the section two is about uh, fighters, uh, the how we can avoid uh, you can you can how we can actually avoid the cyber attacks and threats. Uh, cyber uh, Security Operations Center (SOC) is basically the main uh, you can say the frontliner who actually who uh, who actually help us out to protect our IT assets. Then we will discuss the roles and responsibility of Security Operations Center. So let's start with the first agenda item. Uh, we will discuss two main things: attacks and types of threat actors. So first is the uh, how people can be hacked. There are plenty of ways through which people can be hacked, many, many of the ways, but let's let's discuss few of them as a starter point so you guys have some basic idea, the simple way to hack the people. Number one is the rogue access point. Rogue access point is very, very common nowadays. So first of all, what let me, let me just make you understand what is a rogue access point. So for example, in rogue access point, let's say, uh, this is basically over Gwena Tech or over, let's say this is GTC, Gwena Technical College over building 700. So within building 700, let's say this is over, for example, break room. Okay, so we have uh, different access points located or installed on different locations. And all these uh, access points, or you can say routers are well connected with the local area network server, LAN server. And through LAN server, ISP and all that stuff. So for example, in this break room, uh, let's say I am, I mean, there are weak signals, like I, I receive weak Wi-Fi signals. I'm having difficulty or data rate is very slow, signal strength is very weak. So I just request to my local area network server administrator, ask him, can you please install one access point here in the break room because I'm, I'm really having a hard time. Let's say he just turned down my request. So what I do is I just go back home and I just purchase my own access point and I just found an ethernet cable and put the ethernet cable back back into the access point. Now what will happen? This access point will start broadcasting Wi-Fi signals. Now if it start broadcasting Wi-Fi signal, I can have no much better speed. But did they install, did they configure any security setting? No. So what will, what this particular access point will be called rogue access point. And this access point can be installed by a hacker. I mean, insider, a hacker can install this access point. Once hacker will install the access point, anybody, I mean, they can use the same SSID, same name as that of the legitimate one. So whenever anybody connect with this access point, what's gonna happen, hacker can collect their information. So this is by the way, the rogue access point. So let's come to the definition of rogue access point. Uh, def rogue access point is hackers may install rogue access point within local area network within local area network posing as a legitimate one Le legitimate wireless access point or you can define it as a uh, hotspot that appears to be legitimate but installed by hacker. So but installed by hacker uh, without authorization within local area network. Within local area network without authority or you can say without permission of local area network administrator. Other than uh, rogue access points, some people, what they can do is they can also create uh, fraudulent web pages, fraudulent 
websites some people they actually create they they steal the session token session tokens and if somebody uh, can steal your session token as uh, as you might have studied in uh, network security course or information security fundamental course if somebody gets your session token they can hijack your uh, your overall session we'll talk about session token and all that stuff in our upcoming chapters we'll discuss that in detail next is the ransomware attack so ransomware attack is basically something like that. For example, let's say you got an email. Let's say this is your computer. For example, you just open your inbox and let's say you got an email from CEO and it says, please download this PDF file. So once you download that PDF file, what can happen? It may lock down your computer if there is a ransomware attack in it. So what will happen? You got your computer completely locked down and now you saw a message coming on your screen. If you want to get back uh, your data, if you want to access your data, you got 72 hours, please give us this amount. That is called ransomware, ra ransomware attack. So if you want to define ransomware attack or how we can, I mean, how it can be categorized, a ransomware attack is basically, um, you can say a computer is presenting, computer is presenting uh, a message or you can say presenting a user with a screen requesting for payment before a user can access his or her data so basically it's your own computer but it got locked down like just imagine if you open the file somebody else will actually set a password or username or may maybe the same username but a password on your computer that is called ransomware attack next is the cyber warfare uh, sorry for that there's a gap cyber warfare cyber warfare is very common it's also called asymmetric warfare for example if there are two countries fighting countries having different military strength so that's the cyber warfare is basically the way or the tool through which they can level the battlefield uh, cyber warfare is basically if you want to define cyber warfare it's basically target the nations like they target their national networks so basically cyber in cyber warfare uh it's basically attack designed to disrupt, corrupt, and exploit nation's interest, nation's interests by targeting their uh, utilities network, their e-commerce sites and all that stuff. So basically just imagine, for example, if there are two countries, they're fighting with each other and they have different one, the country having weak military strength, they will hack their websites, the national websites, and then they will ask them, hey, let's start negotiation. Don't attack us, otherwise we'll do this, this, this. Uh, threat actors, I believe everybody's well familiar with the first term, amateurs. Amateurs are also known as script kiddies script kiddies script kiddies who are they they basically um, they are basically having less hacking skills or poor hacking skill or less hacking knowledge they have less hacking knowledge uh, no programming expertise so no programming expertise so they don't have any programming expertise. There is one more M. Uh, so what they do is they use the code or a script written by someone else. That's why we call them script kiddies. Like they don't know what is inside the script. They just get the script written by a professional hacker and trick the people. That's basically what most of the amateur hackers, what they do. Next is the hacktivist as name suggests, hacker activist. So they do hacking, hacking for political or social reasons 
Then we have uh, most of the other hackers, they, they belong to this category where they, uh, they do the hacking for financial benefits. And that's the most highest motivation for most of the hackers, even for the bug bounty hunters as well. They actually do all these bug bounties and all that stuff just for the financial gain. Uh, nowadays, uh, IoT is it's in high demand. IoT is, I believe everybody is well familiar with IoTs. It is called Internet of Things. So IoTs are basically like, uh, for example, uh, uh, the RFID tags, all these stuff are basically they belong to IoT, wireless sensor networks or sensor nodes. In fact, these are IoTs. What these IoTs they actually do? Uh, IoTs are basically, uh, let's say, for example, this is, let's say, uh, downtown. And within the downtown, we have deployed, let's say, different sensors. Uh, these sensors, they actually monitor, for example, uh, traffic pattern, they monitor the air quality, et cetera, et cetera. For example, the parking spots, everything. After monitoring all these stuff, they upload the data, or they actually forward this information to this cloud, maybe city administration website, okay? So these IoT sensors, they are autonomous, without human intervention, they monitor the information and send the information over the cloud. Now, for example, let's say, because everything is going over cloud, now let's say if anybody anybody actually block their communication, anybody if they block their communication, so this is called DOS attack, denial of service attack. So if the DOS attack occurs, what will happen? This cloud will get nothing. Somebody is blocking their com communication. For example, somebody may hack these particular sensors. That's another problem. Because the problem with these sensors are, these are very tiny, very miniaturized sensors, and we cannot use super duper security protocols to protect them. That's the problem. Uh, and DOS attack is becoming lethal day by day. I mean, because we are now more dependent over the cloud and uh, DOS attack could affect our communication and all that stuff. Like you might heard about in 2016, the Dyne, you might heard about the Dyne, which is a domain name, uh, domain name uh, service provider, domain name provider, in fact. So uh, a, a DOS attack, hackers, they launch a DOS attack against Dyne and thousands of websites uh, actually went down back in 2016. So there are many examples like that. So uh, DOS attack, as we already talked about, uh, there are many examples of DOS attacks. If you guys, uh, uh, so there are many examples for the DOS attacks. Um, beside the DOS attack, like, uh, please remember one thing. Nobody can claim that I am 100% secure, I'm safe, I have a super duper system. Nobody can claim that. Even, let me just tell you, in 2016, in 2016, even FBI and Department of Homeland Security, they were targeted by hackers. 20,000 employees of FBI, their personal identifiable information, PII, personal identifiable information was disclosed. Department of Homeland Security, their 9,000 employees' personal identifiable, uh, identifiable information was disclosed. What is personal identifiable information? Uh, it could be your name, okay? For, I mean, anybody who's uh, undercover name, disclosure of the name could be, the real name could be a problem. Uh, then we have, um, uh, it could be your social security number. It could be your home address. It could be your birth date. So these are basically the personal identifiable information, like your high school name, your middle school name, your university, that is not PII, okay? Because there could be many people having the same stuff. So let's let's uh, let's move to our second uh, section, which is the fighters. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, in order to avoid, in order to protect our IT infrastructure, we we actually we are dependent on security operation center. So security operation center, they they mainly um, uh, they provide four types of services. Mainly they provide four types of services. First of all, they provide monitoring services. They provide management, asset management, risk management, and all that stuff covers in that. Then they provide threat solutions. If there is any threat, they provide solutions like IDS, IPS, and all that stuff. Other than that, uh, they also housed security devices, housed security. Uh, now, security operation center can be in-house or it can be outsourced. Most of the people, if they want to save some money, they actually outsource security operations center because it's it's much cheaper as compared to um, having, you know, in-house. In-house is, of course, already cheaper, uh, sorry, expensive, while outsource is much, much cheaper. 
Um, the people in the security operation center, we have mainly three tiers. We have divided the people in three tiers. The tier one, it is called the uh, alert analyst. Alert analyst and alert analyst is basically on the frontliners. They are frontliners. Frontliners like the people who are doing internships, the first job and all that. Uh, what they do? They actually monitor incidents. They are monitor all type of incidents. Uh, they open and verify tickets. So whenever somebody create a ticket, say I'm got, I think I'm I got hacked and all that. So they open the ticket, verify the ticket. Verify means whether it's a security problem or not whether a security problem or not. If it is not a security problem, then they then they actually forward the ticket to concerned department. And they try to actually solve the issue. If they couldn't, then they forward the ticket to tier two. Forward to tier two. Are you getting a point? So monitor incident, uh, try to do troubleshooting and all that. If they couldn't, then they forward the ticket to tier two. Uh, tier two is also known as incident respondents. Responders responders and incident responders what they do is they actually uh, you can say they uh, they do some deep investigations deep investigations um, other than that they you know advise solutions remediation solutions and if they cannot identify the source of source of incident then they forward ticket to tier 3 like they just escalate the ticket and tier 3 is basically SME this is tier three, which is SME, subject matter expert. Subject matter expert, they are more uh, experienced people. Uh, they can, I mean, they, they uh, you can say they are basically more technical people having five to 10 year experience and then they, they can do this stuff. SOC handler or some people, they also call it CISO, Chief Information Security Officer. They manage the overall projects, overall day-to-day -day stuff and other security projects as well. Uh, the technologies that SOC, uh, which they use or which they must include, in fact, first of all, the technology is SOC, they use a technology or software which is called SIM. SIM stands for Security Information and Event Management. Security Information Event Management and what exactly it does it actually collects and filters data which is basically coming from monitoring system so current data which is coming from monitoring systems so the first step is sign that basically the tool and it first what it does it first collects and filters the data to further fight against threats. Uh, in SIME, there are mainly three technologies. SIME mainly uses three technologies. Three technologies. So in Security Operation Center, SIME uses three technologies. Number one, the first thing is threat intelligence. So they use some threat intelligence tool like vulnerability assessment, uh, they do the pen testing and all that in it. Then security monitoring. They use plenty of tools for security monitoring, uh, like intrusion detection system and other stuff. They use IDS, firewalls and all that, uh, packet sniffers. And next they do event collection. They collect all the events, event correlation and analysis. So this is basically what Security Operations Center, what exactly they do. Uh, the last thing for today is the certifications. I believe all of you guys, because we are in the technical system. So certifications are, of course, they play a very important role. Believe me, if you have good certification, uh, 
some people, I mean, sometimes it happens. I have seen many people, they don't have any associate degree, nothing like that. All they have is certification. One of the very good certification is CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker, which is offered by EC Council. Okay, very good certification. Uh, I believe everybody should have Security Plus. Please do some work and please, please get this certification. Very, very important. The organization is Comtia. Uh, there's, I mean, there are many. Uh, again, in order to do uh, Security Plus, please first pass Network Plus. Network Plus, again, offered by Comtia. Um, I mean, after having some experience, some, some, you know, sort of understanding technique, having some technical stuff in, then you should go for CISSP. CISSP, Certified Information System Security Professional, which is offered by ISC Square. ISC Square is International Information System Security Certification Consortium. That's the institute. So that's the organization who offers CISSP. But... I mean, don't jump into, don't rush for CISSP first, because if you are a CISSP, definitely you can easily get a job. But again, if you can appear for CISSP exam after having five years of experience and the test duration is after also five hours. And again, CISSP is not technical. It's managerial, how you can manage security projects and all that stuff. So it's not that technical. So I highly recommend to have these certifications first and then go to uh, CISSP. If anybody has any questions, please do let me know. Uh, see you guys in the next video.